So, uh, I would like to invite uh, the uh, last part of the session, that is panel discussion uh, on the lung cancer management. I would like to invite uh, Virinder, he is our go-to-go thoracic surgeon uh, when we are dealing with these kind of lesions and uh, Nivedita, uh, colleague in radiology department, uh, she is looking after uh, the lung cancer uh, with us. Kunal, who is looking for the interventional aspect of uh, lung cancer management. Saik, who will stage us uh, during the nuclear medicine uh, workup. And uh, Rajiv, uh, who <laughs> diagnosed whether what we are actually treating. And Nikhil, I think Nikhil is from RT side and Ajay, who is uh, our uh, part from medical oncology side in the panel. Uh, I think once everybody is there, uh, then I will start. So we have a very uh, big team that uh, uh, take care of the lung cancer cases in a, a very well fashioned manner. Uh, I am coming to the first case. Uh, if we have time, uh, then we will discuss others. But uh, coming to 41 year old female and uh, unmarried, there is no comorbidities, there is no history of any other malignancy. She was recently had a history of breast lung and which was investigated and uh, it was proven to be a cancer and uh, during the staging workup there is a uh, nodule that was seen in the left upper lobe so uh, to nevidita what it looks like uh, uh, yeah so uh, the nodule in left upper lobe shows a speculated margin and given that no other nodule i'm seeing this might as well be a, a malignant lesion of okay. course, a lung cancer. Okay. Appearance wise, yes. Okay. So, can uh, we know that this is uh, a infection or it is uh, a metastasis or it is a second primary? Are there any specific features in which we can differentiate these things? So, uh, the appearance of uh, this mass is very typical of a primary lung cancer because in metastasis, generally the margins are smooth. They are smooth, rounded margins. We don't see speculations in general in metastasis. Secondly, I am not seeing any other associated features of infection in this case. Otherwise, if there are associated, you know, uh, uh, if we can think of TB, if there is associated atelectasis, fibrosis, some central lobular nodules associated, uh, then in that case, uh, we may think of coexistent uh, infection. Mm. But if you just give me this picture, I would first place my bet on a primary malignant lung cancer. Okay. Uh, Virendra. Uh, this patient has been referred from ResNet uh, to you uh, to know that uh, whether we are dealing with the uh, metastatic conditions or in uh, second primary. Uh, how will you work up uh, these kind of patients uh, in your unit? I am giving you some additional uh, images. We can see that there is a breast on the left side and there is something yeah. which is here. Uh, so clinically you said sir there is a left breast lump and here also we can see and uh, uh, along with that there is a left upper lobe lung nodule. So uh, what Nivedita said radiologically looks like a second primary but uh, I would like to get a histological confirmation done. I would like to get a biopsy from breast as well as I would request to target lung also. Correlate again whether they are uh, you know same histology or two we are dealing with two separate primaries because management is absolutely different in both clinical scenarios. Okay, so, so that is first thing that we will ask for. Okay, so this is a routine uh, case in every scenario or it, uh, it is specific to this particular case? How will you decide that uh, we need biopsy from these two sides? Uh, uh, specific to this case actually because of breast lump as well as the lung. That, that's why I'll, I'll request, I'll get the biopsy histological confirmation from both. both. Yeah. So I Otherwise, also, if there was uh, uh, no uh, breast lump, the clinical uh, uh, feature or the radiological, then also I think lung warrants a biopsy. Okay. So I think uh, Nivita has very well defined that what are the features that will look like and we have seen uh, various presentations and what are the chances that the nodules, uh, when we, they have speculations and no nodularity, there is a chance that might be primary is very high and uh, then the other findings that affect the resectability and the role of uh, imaging to look for distant metastasis. So as invasive breast C, there is no special type. Uh, we have discussed that uh, whether is the nodule is a primary or metastasis. 
whether the biopsy is indicated from the lung nodule or whether there is any additional need of imaging. Uh, Nivedita, do you think there is any additional need of imaging at this point of time? No, I think first biopsy should go ahead with the biopsy. Okay. Uh, so, uh, how will you work up uh, if there is a known case of uh, CA breast and now there is a suspected case of maybe a CA lung. So, whether you will go uh, pet first or you do a biopsy first? Uh, sir, PET is warranted in this case because uh, with the available image, even if it is uh, from breast, it is still oligometastatic. Or if it is a second primary, we are dealing with the lung cancer, PET is warranted. So both, I, if there is no difference in sequencing, you can do PET followed by biopsy, but both are needed, biopsy as well as PET CCT. Okay. Uh, just for everybody's, uh, this thing, I think we will discuss with the panel. But uh, what everyone is, will suggest, ki, how will you do the metastatic workup in case of a CLN? Uh, in this particular case, it is not required further, you do only PET CT, you do an MRI brain only, or you do uh, both PET CT and MRI brain. Uh, anyone else can raise your hand and actually can suggest it. What is the ideal way to stage a lung cancer? Then panel is here to answer that. PET CT and MRI brain. So that is how the audience poll, I, th I think everybody is right, uh, that we have to do a PET CT. In this case, there was uptake both in case of uh, uh, primary site and the nodal site. Uh, Sayak is there, actually, or Indraja. Indraja is there? I think they have not uh, there. Uh, Nevitada, can we differentiate based on the FDG, FDT, whether uh, there is any differential uptake in differential cancers? You have any idea? I know you are radiologist, but I'm asking an extrapolation as a nuclear medicine uh, person. I think you should answer this <laughs> if the nuclear medicine person is not here. Okay. So uh, it was having an FDG, FDT in both these areas and it was almost similar. Uh, what do you think the MRI brain is necessary, uh, Virendra or I think Nikhil uh, in these, uh, both these scenarios? Do you routinely do the uh, work of uh, MRI brain? For any uh, lung cancer patient, <coughs> if you are treating with a radical intent, then the MRI brain should be done prior to the starting date. Okay. Uh, Virendra, your take on that actually because we have seen a lecture in which uh, there is a different opinion in early stages. Yeah, we so might avoid… Uh, in D1, uh, PET scan uh, with D1 N0, we can avoid MRI brain. That is what even guidelines NCCN and all recommend. But there is a paper, uh, so in T1 also, if biopsy is adenocarcinoma and it is T1C, that is uh, 2 to 3 centimeter, then the chances of brain mets are higher. So this again looks like, you know, T1C, I'm not sure about the size, but relatively like T1C kind of. And if biopsy is adenocea and uh, at adenocarcinoma and uh, lung primary, then obviously better to get MRI brain also done. Okay. So MRI brain has been done and uh, these are the images. Um, uh, Nivedita, uh, mm. what is your interpretation in that actually? Yeah, yeah, now there it is has a been uh, brain metastasis in the left parietal lobe, undoubtedly, ring enhancing lesion. Okay. So we said that uh, there is no enhancement as per se on the contrast images, but there is definite uh, signal intensity change in case of flare and uh, the heavily titivated sequences. There is some cystic change. So, how many of the times we will see that these are not NNC? Yeah, many a times we see that. That uh, cystic image, especially uh, if ALK positive uh, status of the lung cancer is there, then many times we see that there are only ring enhancing cystic meds, not visible, absolutely no visible enhancement, only it's seen on flare. So, these uh, patterns are commonly encountered in our practice. Okay. Uh, it, maybe it is solitary, maybe it is multiple. We did uh, an additional testing because there was a request whether it was a solitary because anyway we are dealing with breast cancer and then there is a concomitant uh, second lung primary and whether there is any thing that is there in the brain, we see that there are two nodules now. Uh, so whether you will still think it is a uh, curative intent and if you think uh, then what would be the line of management in these particular patients and same to you Nikhil, what do you think whether there might be a possibility of giving radiation or uh, any point of surgery because these are two nodules, uh, oligo, 
lung or oligo you can you can call it an oligo breast the main the intent one of the reason maybe the we need to do the mutation and analysis of the lung tissue because that also determines the outcomes in a significant way or it will also determine the intent of the treatment if it is a mutation positive when with the two lung mates the average survival is 4 to 5 years so you need to take it whether the mutation comes positive for the lung or not the breast appears like a operable so it will be treated and still uh, if we say it's still a oligometastatic uh, category so you may still give a chance and treat with a curative means uh, virendra does it matter whether it is arising from breast or it is arising from lung uh yes so uh, brain you are saying yeah so first thing is that uh, we are not uh, sure about that lung uh, biopsy is that a second primary or met from so that uh, it is proven it was uh, we okay. have shown that it was so, a lung, lung primary it was i think it was adenocarcinoma uh, no i think uh, still patient has Ad adenocarcinoma is, mortality difference it hmm. ttf and positive okay. so patient has a good general condition she is young and uh, uh, whether the uh, uh, the brain lesions are from breast or lung i attribute to lung because that is commoner compared to uh, breast but wherever it is from i think still because of her general condition and uh, you know localized disease at both places both primaries and this can be also taken care of then i think we should push for a curative intent treatment still whatever the uh, you know uh, origin of this brain lesions may be uh to rajiv now we have uh, see that there are nodule in the lung and uh, when the biopsy sample will come to you how easy or how difficult when it is adeno to differentiate between whether it is originating from lung or originating from breast so uh, morphologically many times you can't predict uh, the breast uh, the lung primary unless and until the tumor is having a lipidic growth pattern that is the only clue on based purely on the morphology otherwise you have to do the immunohistochemistry that is a mandatory to distinguish the lung versus the breast primary lung tumor will be uh, ttf1 or napsin positive and uh, breast tumor can be positive for the hormonal receptor or they if they are negative like a triple breast cases they can be gata3 or trpss that is a new marker so those are the specific markers uh, which are pertaining to the site so we we can't rely purely on morphology to distinguish between so like this case it is having a gata 3 uh, so positivity gata 3 is not a very uh, robust or very specific marker it can be seen in in addition to so here the main thing is uh, ttf and napsin uh, you will not expect them to come positive in in breast okay so uh, uh, what everybody thinks whether in this particular case there is a small uh, lung mass which is thrown mats in the brain whether we have to do a uh, invasive mediastinal staging there is no pet avidity uh, node that is there in the uh, chest any uh, audience poll whether we will do ebus we will do mediastinal copy we do uh, ebus followed by mediastinal copy i'm expecting some answer <laughs> my panelists are there actually they will answer it anyways anyone actually so they uh, they are unable to answer uh, virender so i think uh, you might be in the better position whether you will still uh, go ahead with invasive medicine sampling when there is a uh, we have seen that there is no ct which is showing uh, metastatic disease there is no uh, pet ct which is showing a uh, pet have not in the mediastinum so whether there is any need for early stage uh, lung cancers to go and do an invasive medicinal sampling so uh, this is little uh, different clinical scenario than uh, where we you know say that is uh, we can avoid invasive medicinal staging like t1 n0 peripheral we can avoid but this is not uh, t1 n0 n0 this is m1 it is metastatic disease and it it means that the uh, uh, histology is little aggressive in spite of a smaller lesion patient has got a brain mat uh, so in this case i will prefer uh, invasive mediastinal staging because management will again uh, you know change a lot if it is n0 disease we can with uh, invasive mediastinal staging we can prognosticate better and we can plan our treatment also better 
Suppose patient has got N0 but M, uh, metastatic disease outcome is relatively better than patient being N2 or N1 also for that matter. If patient is N0, uh, you know, um, we can, uh, main modality of treatment in this case will be systemic ward uh, surgery. It is better to get a molecular analysis and, you know, plant treatment. But if it is N0 disease and you are going ahead with surgery followed by systemic therapy, that is also not wrong. But if end stage comes positive, then it is preferable to go ahead with systemic therapy and then plan for surgery. So I will prefer uh, staging, basement staging in this case. Uh, so uh, he has uh, explained very beautifully why we do the uh, staging. But uh, there are many times when even there is a positive uh, nodal disease on the CT and the PET CT. The sensitivity of these imaging techniques are not where, uh, that great and still uh, we want to rule out whether or prove it whether we are dealing with the malignancy or not. So I am not going into those details uh, and uh, because in India we have to confirm uh, with invasive staging whether we are dealing with a granulometrous disease or a non-granulometrous disease even if the PET ability is more than 4 SUV. Okay. So, uh, I think Saik is there. Saik, uh, we have just this case in which uh, uh, there is a breast cancer uh, and there is a suspected lung cancer. Is there is any way uh, in the PET CT or any new tracer which can differentiate between these two, uh, whether uh, the lung nodule is a metastatic disease from breast or it is a new primary? Uh, so, there are some few tracers like uh, APS, there is a tracer that is uh, fluoro estradiol tracer. So, if it is a ER positive breast cancer, so there we can do it. Most likely in lung cancer, it will not show up there. And if it is a metastasis from breast and it is a ER positive uh, disease, then it will show up there. So, that so is you will ad uh, you will advise uh, your PET CT after the biopsy report. Uh, if it is ER and PR positive only, so, then you will refer uh, so it. So the thing is that in, if that is the doubt. Uh, that whether to go ahead with biopsy or not or uh, do we uh, need to consider this as just a, a metastasis from breast uh, cancer. If that is a doubt and they are asking for a molecular imaging to decide whether to do biopsy or not, then we can suggest and if it is the original disease is ER positive, then I may suggest it and if the tracer is available, which is available commercially in many places. Uh, but if they are already have decided a biopsy plan and all, then uh, the, uh, the primary disease all also ER negative, then I would uh, suggest that go ahead with the biopsy. Uh, I think uh, we have to prove if we are treating and uh, if there is a decision that is lacking to differentiate uh, whether it is an oligo versus uh, advanced disease of breast and we have to prove it uh, by biopsy. Uh, uh, so we know that uh, we have to work up these cases, we have to do CT then followed by CT then we have to do EBUS and followed by pterosinoscopy. Uh, the question uh, is whether we have to treat breast first or lung first, uh, whether it is a surgery first or we have to do some kind of knee adjuvant treatment first and if we have to knee adjuvant, what is the kind of chemotherapy that we have to do it. Uh, both Virinder and uh, Ajay can answer this. From lung perspective, if our surgeon is, is comfortable and it is, looks resectable, despite uh, there is oligomers and there is, there is an NGO disease, and definitely I will prefer my surgeon to resect the tumor. But if there is a node N2 positive, or then maybe I prefer to give some systemic therapy and see the biology and decide the call later. And between breast and uh, means if you are operating lung, then I think we refer to breast games also to operate simultaneously and decide the systemic therapy later on based on the histopathology report and all molecular reports. So, uh, this patient is having uh, breast lung. Uh, there is axillary node that are positive. And, uh, and when the stitching workup was done, the PET CT was done, uh, there was a nodule that was there which is showing up today. Yes, so, when, when if the axillary nodes are positive, then definitely we need to give systemic therapy first. And if it, uh, the breast uh, tumor is showing uh, the ERPR and everything is negative, then we can plan platinum based therapy which will work at both places. But if, if uh, ERPR comes positive, then maybe we need to think uh, regimen carefully. Which, but there are care, which for uh, lung cancer, we generally prefer platinum based regimen. For breast cancer, we generally prefer anthra based regimen. But there are data in lung also in initial 1980s and 70s where they used all kinds of regimen. Platinum was not a choice. Later on, the they realized platinum gives the maximum benefit. But 
all those are systemic drugs that will work in lung as well. So that time uh, with discussion with the th breast DMG and thoracic DMG, we may prefer to plan uh, taxane and platinum based regimen that will work, take care of both the sides. Okay. Uh, Virendra, uh, I know you are surgeon, you will do surgery first, but uh, no, no, <laughs> whether there is a need for chemotherapy or not? Not in this case. Uh, we need to take care of brain lesions also. So I think we should plan for uh, uh, if feasible SRS first to brain, get a molecular analysis done on a um, lung uh, sample, NGS or molecular, see whether they are positive or not. If anything is positive, it is better to give a chemotherapy that works what Ajay said for lung as well as breast and if we can combine that ta targeted therapy if, if anything is positive. If that is not, if nothing is positive on molecular, then again breast warrants chemotherapy, such a chemotherapy which works both, both in lung as well as breast. So we have taken care of brain lesion. Let's uh, uh, rule out uh, whether disease is N0 or N2. And if it is, wh whatever the stage for oligometastatic, most important treatment is, you know, systemic therapy. So start with chemotherapy which works in both. If, and if the disease is stable by that time, we can operate both at the same setting because lung is also resectable and breast is also resectable. So, you, you know, we can plan both surgery at the same time after chemo. Yeah. So I think uh, it, this is truly comprehensive which will require the role of everybody's input. I think Konal is sitting very quietly. He's thinking that there is no node and uh, there is a small lung nodule and he is uh, sitting with uh, Virender to discuss whether we can do RFA or, uh, or in that matter actually uh, Nikhil can we do SPRT in this particular nodule? I know that uh, this will require surgery for breast, uh, followed by neurogen chemotherapy. The SPRT may not be the first option in this case because we need to treat the breast also. So we need to see and to treat the same side, the breast with the radiotherapy plus SPRT into the same area, the chances of radiation pneumonitis will be high. So dose constraint may not be able to be. No, no, so for uh, so lung, if we have to take a different decision. Yeah, for a lung only I am talking. Uh, to do a surgery will be a better choice as compared to the SBI. And what is your... Uh, so, surgery would be my first preference. Uh, so, uh, since the patient is young, uh, she does not have any comorbidities. So, surgery obviously would be the first option. Only if she is comorbid with uh, uh, other possibilities, then I would offer uh, ablative modalities. Yeah, I think uh, that will be the uh, right choice uh, because the patient cannot undergo uh, radiation uh, both for uh, this thing, uh, breast and the lung and uh, ablation, Kunal is not very comfortable somehow today but uh, otherwise he will take the lead in doing early treatment of uh, uh, radiofrequency ablations. So uh, this particular patient uh, underwent three cycles of chemotherapy and then uh, the surgery was decided the vets uh, with selective intestinal lymph node dissection. There is BCS and lymph node dissection planned in the same fashion and SRS to the brain lesions. Uh, how uh, safe is uh, SRS and uh, up till what extent you can give SRS uh, and when you will decide for WBRT uh, for the brain metastasis in case of lung cancer? So generally what they say is around 3 to 4 lesions are safe to do provided the size is limited to around 2 to 3 centimeters of the lesion. Uh, in clinical practice, we uh, take a decision whether to go with uh, SRS or a whole brain with a simultaneous boost depending on the histology and the molecular biology also. So if the patient is having uh, for a breast, I'm talking, if the patient is having say triple negative cancer or a HER2 positive cancer, as the chances of having a metastasis to the other side in the brain are also high. So in that case, you may err towards giving the whole brain artery rather than only SRS. Uh, we saw it in a lung mutation positive lung cancer where we know that the chances of being a limited disease are high, the long term survival is also there. So you avoid the side effects of whole brain RT and give only the SRS to the lesions. I think, and I think that is the right choice. Uh, coming to second case, um, 73 year old uh, never smoker and uh, hypertensive diabetic, there is a past history of pulmonary tuberculosis. There is a history of cuff that was there since four months and uh, upper tolerance was one flight. These are the uh, imaging presentation and uh, because there is a history of uh, previous tuberculosis, uh, do we think that there is any suspicion of malignancy in uh, these scans, Nevidita? 
Yeah, of course, the lesion in uh, the right upper lobe, I think that's the upper lobe, uh, that looks uh, suspicious, the third one, in the third uh, section. Yeah, and also, uh, because it's got a speculated margin, and even in the right lower lobe, uh, I think that lesion also needs a biopsy in the right lobe, yeah, the right lower lobe, that lesion also has got a speculated margin. So these two lesions, despite the underlying features of fibrosis, atelectasis, these two lesions, in my opinion, they appear suspicious for uh, malignancy and needs further workup, especially in the 73 years old. Okay. So, Virinder, now uh, you have a report in which there are, there might be two lesions which are neoplastic in a pre-existing condition of tuberculous etiology. Uh, how will you proceed in such scenarios? As Nivedita is saying, both lesions are suspicious. I would like to target the, uh, you know, uh, the largest one or the, the most suspicious one. And uh, then um, go ahead with the pathology report. If it is positive for malignancy, then obviously we may have to think of doing something. And, uh, rest of the parenchyma doesn't look that great. But uh, still, we need a metastatic workup, functional workup, lot of other stuff to decide how to go ahead with this. And there is a yeah, thin rim of effusion also there. We can see better to tap and get a cytology done if that is positive. Okay. Uh, so, uh, definitely, I think Nivedita has done his uh, part, uh, uh, her part actually to differentiate between lung mass and the sequelae of uh, tuberculosis. And uh, uh, so, we have to test the plurifluid. It was tested, uh, it was coming as adenocarcinoma TDF and positive. Type was done, it was negative for malignant cells. Uh, do we have to target the second nodule? Or uh, do we have to refer to SAIC to uh, see it further, okay, whether that was uh, looking like malignancy or not? Because there was a suspicion raise for uh, another nodule. If it is highly suspicious, the <laughs> management will change because both are in uh, separate lobes. So if it is suspicious on radiologically, we need to be very sure whether that is a TB sequelae or it's a, another lesion. So I think better to target that also if it is suspicious. Uh, so uh, FDG had been done. There is no uptake anywhere else. There was a uptake only in that uh, speculated nodule that is in the right upper lobe. Uh, so I, uh, now this uh, has not been biopsied and there is a suspicion on radiological features that this might be malignant. How easy or how difficult to label you it as a neoplastic etiology based on the FDG findings, uh, whether it is a TB or it is a uh, uh, neoplasm? Um, so, can I see the um, uh, CT in that, um, uh, no, not that one, this one. No, not that one, the soft tissue window. Uh, And the, the other one, that uh, the lung window. Okay. Uh, so the thing is that uh, fibrosis can, can look like uh, look ha have a, a reticular appearance and all. And if it is an old TB, it will not show uptake. So I would consider that more based on the scan that uh, after the FDG PET, I would consider that the lower lesion most likely would be a residual fibrosis. Okay. So now there is a difference of opinion. Uh, there is a structural feature which are suggesting there could be malignancy and uh, metabolic features they are suspecting uh, that there could be lung cancer. Whether you will ask for observation, you ask for a biopsy. <coughs> Nikhil and Virinder. Um, if it is not evident that is proven to be a positive, then I think we should consider that as negative. And you know, not push for biopsy for the other lesion. Because uh, if that is evident yeah, positive... Is the first nodule, uh, Shaik is calling it as a fibrotic nodule on nuclear imaging. The upper EBIT one also? Yeah, yeah. No, not that. Not that? Yeah, that's... That's a nodule that is down. Okay. Ah, so that we can ignore actually. Okay. That's all. No need to push for biopsy for that. Okay. So it was uh, biopsy proven uh, uh, adenocarcinoma and uh, the other nodule was negative. Uh, there are other issues, patients having aged, there are multiple comorbidities, there is limited function status, pulmonary status is also borderline, the patient is having pulmonary hypertension. So again, uh, 
the question. Actually, I'm again rotating between Kunal, Virendra and Nikhil. So, uh, is he is an ideal candidate for surgery, Virendra? No, doesn't look like a limited effort tolerance, borderline pulmonary function, uh, history of uh, TB with poor lung appearance on a scan. Doesn't look like. Still, I'll get a PFT done, but I don't think so. So, I'm just exploring the non-surgical options that we have discussed. The SBRT can be an option for such lesion yeah, because uh, as per the guidelines also, the SBRT is a first choice for uh, inoperable lung cancer, early stage tumors, typically less than 5 centimeters. Uh, for this case, uh, it's very close to the chest wall, so we may have to fraction it a bit more. Rather than the 3 to 5 fraction, we may give around 8 fraction and we can be able to treat. I think we have seen Kunal uh, multiple examples uh, in uh, early stage lung cancer regarding the RFA. How safe uh, will be in these uh, scenarios? So it is generally uh, very safe uh, with the complication rate uh, uh, with less than one percent. Uh, uh, and since the it's CE would be the ideal candidate uh, since he is having pulmonary hypertension, co all comorbidities with uh, emphysema around anteriorly. So he would be ideal case for either ablation, uh, any form of ablation, be it RFA or microwave. Okay, so this patient was discussed when, because there are multiple comorbidities, there is a chance that uh, the radiation might induce uh, things further. And how safe to, to give radiation when there is a lot of interstitial fibrosis, uh, sequelae of tuberculosis, and the, there is a contracture of the right hemithorax, whether it will limit your uh, ability to give it radiation? Limit the ability to deliver a very high dose of uh, radiation because you will increase the more risk of pneumonitis and the compromise in the lung function, the deterioration in the lung function. Okay, thank you. So this patient was planned for RFA. Uh, I will see whether I have to discuss some case. Okay, we will discuss this particular case for five minutes. Uh, Thirty-five year old uh, patients. Uh, fat tolerance for flights, never smoker, no comorbidities, uh, chief complaint while dry cough and weight loss. Uh, I think uh, okay. yeah. So uh, multi station and two, and there is no brain metastasis uh, between Virinder and uh, Ajay. Uh, what you will do? Yes. Uh ECOG zero good general condition. Um, now we have two options, either to plan for a you know a new adjuvant uh, chemo and affordable if if affordable chemo plus immuno followed by surgery or definitive CTRT. Both are fine. We need we need to discuss with patient and you know take a call. Nikhil or Ajay, you will agree with the plan? Yes, sir. I think. <laughs> okay, fine. So, uh, the patient received definitive chemo radiation therapy, 64 gray, uh, concurrent uh, paclitaxel and carboplatin. And uh, how will you do the response assessment, Nivedita? And for how long, uh, whether you will do a CT first or PET CT first? And uh, Shayat, will you ask for a PET CT in the follow up or you ask for a CCT? And then I will ask Virinder whether you ask for a PET CT or ask for a CCT for follow up, and then I will ask Nikhil whether you will agree with the CCT plan or PET-CT plan for the follow-up. Yeah, uh, post-chemo radiation, if we want to assess response, how he is behaving, uh, like what is the disease status, then it is better to get a PET-CCT done because of the morphological as well as, uh, you know, functional status known of the residual thing, if there is any. Uh, but otherwise, if you ask me, um, uh, uh, follow up uh, after once you have declared him uh, disease free, then I think uh, chest x-ray is also enough on a longer t longer term. So what is your opinion, Navitata? Will you agree with the, uh, the surgeons and the nuclear <coughs> medicine plan? Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I agree with them because we already have a baseline PET CT. So, therefore, after treatment, it would be worthwhile to follow with a PET CT to assess for a metabolic response, and thereafter can be with a. Uh, so, uh, so I just uh, I'm asking. So, 
after uh, how many weeks or months whether there is any specific criteria to do a pet scan or we can do immediately to see the response so at we should wait at least 8 weeks preferably 12 weeks after the completion of the radiation uh, before that there will be lot of uh, false positive take due to post rt inflammation and all so like that so this was the uh, pet city so uh, do you think there is any uh, thing which looks suspicious in the uh, uh, after pet city or do you think it is a complete response partial response or uh, so i can see a lot of uh, pneumonitic changes like uh, post radiation pneumonitis and all so uh, is there any um, uh, lung window available for that so i don't have actually any lung window uh, i thought you will so only ask for is, pet city uh, so there is uh, one uh, focus uh, where uh, the most avid focus so that was i think the primary disease right so probably there is something uh, there so this is the primary part, ha, so ha, the so disease. probably it is like a partial response it has decreased in size but there is a focus of avid disease and i can see some soft tissue also in that area uh, so that primary disease area the most avid focus in the lower down the bottom most imaging uh, so probably and surrounded by a lot of pneumonitic changes so partial response with radiation pneumonitis so that will be uh, i think what uh, site mentioned we should club pet city findings with the ct findings because sometimes these can be very deceptive yes and, uh, we should take or... many false positive things in that yes. and uh, once we have to correlate with the structural imaging whether what uh, kind of things we are uh, dealing with that mm. so uh, now it is uh, uh, up to nikhil and um, uh, ajay whether we have to treat the patient based on the radiology because he has seen that there might be a partial response Uh, at the primary site, or whether we have to uh, need to do a biopsy of the residual disease that is looking like based on the imaging, or what options we have actually? Do we consider adding drolumab, doing observation, repeat imaging after three months, or we do salvage surgery? So that was I was thinking since uh, we just give a CT RT, why we were not discussing the drolumab? So drolumab is so after, after the CT RT, <laughs> and that starts from day one only. from for completion of ct rt we can give drolumab just do the plain ct there is no progression we can start drolumab and still if you have not given and this imaging if he can offer still we can offer drolumab or uh, other i can observe till this is progression but there is a partial response so still i will prefer to wait and watch for the next time okay so i think uh, we have discussed uh, many things uh, i think it is very necessary that we should be part of mdt discussions uh, we have discussed about the positive and negative aspects of mdg we have discussed the need of uh, mri in brain staging we have discussed about the various surgical options and non surgical options and how the medical oncology uh, uh, helping us in both in adjunct setting and new adjunct setting in the treatment of uh, lung cancer and the palliative settings so i would like to thank all of my panelists for uh, contributing significantly in this uh, team report discussion so thank you so much we now we can meet in the lunch area actually if there are any other further questions thank you so much